Yo, what is up, YouTube? Pilla here, the best for EU, also the best fury warrior in the world. And with that said, I have a big responsibility in making this video and making this guide because I'm like a Jesus of fury warriors. I need to guide people to the right path, to the right spec. And uh, yes, I'm gonna show you how to play this spec. I don't want you to play fucking protection because let's be honest, 80% of warriors at the moment are playing protection. Pussy spec, pussy, really pussy spec. I, I don't have anything else to say about that. So fury is the way, guys. I'm gonna show you how to. Unfortunately, I'm not Swifty. I don't have Raze and Agus to give to people so they can help me test stuff around Az Azeroth, you know. But I use my add-ons, calculations, I use my brain. Even though you, do, you think I don't have brain, I, I actually have quite some brain cells and my, my IQ is bigger than the size of my dick, which means I'm really, really smart. So, yeah, I hope this guide will help you out because uh, Jesus of Fury Warriors is going to show you how to play this pack. Alright, so let's get to the first thing, which is stats priority. I have tested everything, honestly, with both gears, and uh, the thing I found the, the most useful is multi-strike. So, on top of the list will be multi-strike, after that I would definitely go for critical. After critical I would go for mastery, and then I would go for haste and versatility into strength, obviously. So, multi-strike needs to be on the top of the list, and I will explain you later on why is that. Okay, so now we want to talk about gear and gearing up. I think for the first time in history of World of Warcraft, we have uh, two PvP sets that we can choose and buy from Honor and uh, Conquest, obviously. And uh, I think that's the first time ever. So let, th let me actually show you. As you can see here, for example, this helmet. This helmet is from first set. It gives critical and haste. And this one is from the other set. It gives multi-strike and mastery. Stats on this one is better, but this set does not have set bonuses. I don't know why the idea behind that, but let me get to the first one. So the first set, critical and haste, stats are not so good, but it gives a set bonus. It gives two set bonus when you use charge, the critical strike chance of your next blood thirst is increased by 50%. That means your blood thirst, whenever you charge, has 100% to crit, basically. That, that's it, because blood thirst already has increased chance to crit by 30%, and your 20% critical, that means 100% to crit whenever you use charge. So that's not that bad, I went for 2 sets, but 4 set bonus however is you now generate rage from taking damage. As Fury Warrior you don't really need more rage, you have a lot of rage, sometimes you will even have a hard time to get rid of all rage. So I will def definitely recommend you only take 2 sets, uh, 2 pieces from this set because this set is really crap, it's, it's basically based around haste and mastery and critical, no multi-strike whatsoever, this one does have multi-strike. All, all the way, so I would definitely recommend you go for two pieces from the first set just to get that two set bonus and everything else should be from this one with multi-stripe because that's your main stat. Okay, so that was about gear, so as I said, just go for two uh, two pieces from the first set, everything else from the other set for a full multi-stripe. And now I want to talk about weapons. As you can see, I have two handed weapons instead of one handers. I have tested everything, honestly. I think it just does more damage, uh, it feels like it does more damage, add-on says it does more damage, uh, execute do more damage with two-handers, blaze storm it just does so much damage with two-handers, I didn't really go deep into math because I'm really bad at mathematical issues, I'm better at, you know, sexual intercourses and stuff, so I'll just cut all the Einstein uh, crap and just say, two-handers definitely over one-handers, trinkets wise there are not so many good trinkets honestly just go for this versatility and uh, strength proc and this one based on strength so these two trinkets as well with two under weapons also there, there i want to talk about enchants now uh, in world of general they change enchanting now you can only enchant neck rings cloak and weapons uh, weapons enchant i went for this mark of shattered hand because the multi-strike enchant is so fucking expensive it's around the 20k gold i'm not gonna give 20k gold just to you know get fucking weapon enchant so for now i just stick with this mark of shattered hand it basically uh, it's basically a dot whenever you atta attack you have like it's like a bleed so it's not that bad but i would definitely recommend if you are rich like swifty if you can give a razor nag to, to someone to give you that enchant definitely go for multi-strike enchant uh, everything else is multi-strike as well, uh, rings multi-strike, ring multi-strike, neck multi-strike and the cloak should be multi-strike, I have critical because there are no multi-strikes on a auction, auction house, but I'm pretty sure there is multi-strike enchant for cloak as well, so go for multi-strike there as well. Gem wise there are no more gems on PvP gear, at least not at the moment, and uh, reforging obviously it's removed from the game. And that's all about gear guys, and let's get to the talents now, get to the talents now! Okay, so let's talk about talents now. As you can see here in this window, this is my talent build. This is what I 
what that what I'm using in first tier. We have Juggernaut or Double Time. Both are really good. Juggernaut reduces cooldown and charge by uh, eight seconds, but Double Time time gives you two stacks of charge, so you can charge and charge again immediately. Both are good, as I said. Double Time this suits my gameplay more, my game style more. So yeah, I went for Double Time. Warbringer is just really bad. It just instead of fruits, now it's a stun. 1.5 seconds, but it's 20 second cooldown on charge. I would not recommend you to go with Warbringer. So yeah, just pick one between those two. Tier number two, it's all about healing. Uh, Enrage region, second wind or impending victory. Impending victory is useless. It's really bad. It's like used condom. It's really, really bad. Second wind, uh, terrible. Even maybe even worse because I mean they nerf second wind, of course, for Mr. Pandaria like heavily. Whenever you're below 35%, you gain 10% leech. I tested it out. It's like. <laughs> 500 heals each hit, it's just useless and shit. And rage regeneration, however, it's really, really nice. Actually, really nice because you can use it while stunned. And I don't know if you remember in Cataclysm, you had to be enraged in order to use this. So you have to use like Zerg Rage or to crit before you're using actually enraged region. Now you don't need to. You don't need to be enraged, you can use while stunned and it's only one minute cooldown. It heals you for 10% of your maximum health and additional 20% over 5 seconds. Real nice. As I said, and I'm obviously going with that one. Tier number three, we have Furious Strikes, Sudden Death, and Unclub Above Thirst. I can't spell that. This one that I can't spell is shit. Blood Thirst no longer has a cooldown. It just means you 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 can have a lot of rage whenever you want. But as I said, you don't really need rage. It's Fury Warrior, you have a lot of rage already. Sudden Death, that's what I want to talk about. Your auto attacks hits have a 10% chance to make your next execute cost no initial rage and be usable on any target regardless of health level. Your auto attacks, auto attacks as I said before, your stat priority on the top of the list is multi-strike because it gives you bonus auto attacks and as a fury you have two weapons so you have double chance to get bonus auto attacks and your auto attacks proc sudden death and that means you get executes and executes are your main, is literally your main ability, it does so much damage uh, it's just really nice because it costs zero rage as well. So, why is multi strike on the top of the list? It's because of this talent, sudden death. Just to proc executes more, uh, I mean, as much as we can get procs. So, why is multi strike on the top of the list? It's because of this talent, sudden death. To get as maximum as uh, execute as we can. Fury strikes, wild strikes cost 20% less rage. It's really nice because wild strikes actually hit. Probably the most right after execute. I'm not sure. I think yeah, that's that's true Fury strikes wild strikes cost 25% less rage Fury strikes wild strike. Okay Okay, so Fury strikes wild strike cost 25 less rage uh, It's really nice honestly. It's really nice because uh, Fury strikes. I, I mean wild strikes are probably the strongest ability We have right after execute right now. Uh, wait <laughs> Woo! I had to sneeze. God bless me. Ugh. I mean, uh, Game Master bless me. Anyways, yeah, Fury Strikes are really nice if you don't go for a multi strike build. So, if you don't go for a multi strike build, if you go for the se other set, if you go for the mastery and critical build, I would definitely recommend you go with Fury Strikes because you won't get so many uh, execute procs, anyways. Just go for Fury Strikes. In general, it will be better. You can actually spam all those wild strikes. It's really nice. It does nice damage, but sudden that I still think it's better. Tier number four, we have Stormbolt, Shockwave, and Dragon Roar. Dragon Roar, as you all know, is just for loss because it's always a critical strike. And you just when you have whenever you want to upload the video to YouTube, you just uh, use Dragon Roar a few times, or whenever you want to kill some Swifty fan in BG, just you know, charge, drag, ex I mean, uh, Dragon Roar, simple as that. Shockwave or Stormbolt, you will definitely switch. Between those two talents all the time, depending on who you're fighting in arena, depending on how do you feel today, did you masturbate or shit, so because these two are like really similar. Shockwave is 40, 40 second cooldown, uh, AoE stun in front of you, it's a melee stun, Stormbolt is range stun for 4 seconds as well, 30 second cooldown, so you will uh, change, I mean, switch between those two all the time. For now I have Stormbolt because it's more, uh, it has more like utility, it's range and shit. Tier number 5, we have Mass Spell Reflection, Safeguard and Vigilance. Mass Spell Reflection, it gives a Spell Reflection to all party members, but it replaces your Spell Reflection. So, for example, if you want to use it only for yourself, you can't, because I mean, you don't have a Spell Reflection anymore. So, so, it's not that good, honestly, I will never pick this, 
pick this probably maybe in some cases against some sort of destruction warlocks i don't know safeguard or vigilance uh kind of similar talents honestly okay so vigilance protect the party ray member for 12 seconds reducing damage they take by 30 percent so that means uh, whenever you use, use this on someone, they take 30% less damage. Safeguard, whenever you use this, this on someone, they take 20% less damage. But, the thing is, this has 2 minute cooldown and this has 30 second cooldown. So, I, I think you should definitely go with Safeguard. Some, some cases, Vigilance will probably be good, like <laughs> facing some triple DPS combos. But Safeguard, honestly, I think it's better. And yeah, that's why I picked it. Tier number 6, we have Avatar, Bloodbath and Bladestorm. Let's talk about uh, all these three. Honestly, are really, really good, really good. Don't get me wrong, but the Blaze Storm is just too good. Honestly, I mean, even when you do it on one, one target, uh, one, uh, yeah, one target, when you're like dueling someone, when you use Blaze Storm, it actually does quite some damage, even one on one. Imagine in like arenas or, or rated BGs or wherever, when you use more than one guy, it actually does insane damage. Especially it's Fury, you have two weapons. It does damage with your offhand as well. So it's really, really strong with a two-hand uh, Fury Warrior. That's why I would definitely recommend you go with Blazestorm. But don't get me wrong, Avatar and Bloodbat are good as well. Maybe Bloodbat is not good anymore that much because you can't have both Bloodbat and Blazestorm. But I, I did some things with like Bloodbat and Ravager, which is not bad. So I would definitely say Blazestorm or Bloodbat. Avatar kind of feels weak because it's 3 minutes cooldown. But 20% more damage, it's not bad, honestly. As I said, Blazestorm works for me fine because Two-Handers Fury does so much damage. Last tier is Anger Management. I think this is just dog shit. Honestly, I did some testing. Ah, it's just not good. Uh, Ravager or Siege Breaker. Siege Breaker is so amazing, so, so amazing. I fucking love it. I would definitely pick this if it didn't replace... What the fuck? Intimidating shout. So it replaces my fear... To get fucking attack, I, I I have zero, I have zero understanding for this. Like, why? It's just, no. If you want to go arena siege breaker, it's just fucking no. If you want to troll people, like I did here, as you can see in Lumber Mill. Ah, see a bro, you know, I just pushed him down and then I laugh at his pay face. Loot his score, to get some money, easy money. Fuck bitches, get money. So yeah, that, I would definitely recommend you go with siege breaker to troll people around Azeroth. But in arenas, just know you need that fucking fear, man. Ravager, I mean, that's the only thing left and that's that's a must what you need to pick because you can't pick those two, they're just bad. Throw a real wind axe, ruling wax, at the target location that inflict damage to enemies within 6 yards every 1 second. So it's like blade storm. of course a weaker blade storm that lasts 10 seconds but you can't move it. So if you like, for example, place it here, as you can see in this arena I fought, I fought two melees, I just used the Ravager and Blazestorm at the same time, they took quite some damage, so it, sometimes it can be useful, but a lot of times if people are good, they can just get away with it, maybe if you like Stormbolt stun them into, into Ravager, but it's only like 4 seconds then, it's not, you'll never get full 10 seconds in PvP, you know, uh, duration on the Ravager on one target. So, it's really hard, it's really easy to get out of it, uh, as I said, maybe you can try Blood Bat Ravager, then they get slowed as well and get some more damage done going on. But yeah, definitely uh, pick Ravager over those two, but it's nothing, nothing special. And I'm really disappointed with last year of Warrior Warriors in this expansion, but well, that's life, you know. Sometimes you have bad, uh, bad uh, talents, but you have big dicks, so I think that's, that's balanced. Anyways, let's get to the Glyphs now! Okay, so now it's Glyphs time. First glyph, probably my favorite one, is Glyph of Flawless Defense. You're, you you have a 25% reduced chance for attack attacks against you to be critical strikes while Die by the Sword is active. So it's basically bark, bark skin for warriors. Die by the Sword is already OP as it is right now. Increases your party chance. What the fuck is this guy? It's right now. Increases your party chance. What the fuck is this guy? What the fuck is this guy? Okay. Uh, increases your parry chance by 100% reduces damage taken by 30% for 8 seconds. So it's like a uh, bubble for against melees and uh, shield wall against ranged spell I mean spellcasters. So it's really amazing by uh, like how it is right now. And now we are adding the bar skin to it as well. So it's like supremely good against spellcasters as well. I would definitely recommend you to go with this one because Diablo is for just one probably the, the best defensives we have ever had in this game. Um, the other one is Glyph of Heroic Leap. Increases your speed by 70% for 3 seconds after using Heroic Leap. It's like a day, uh, it's Mr. Pandaria PvP gear bonus set 
they removed that one and made it a glyph. So it's like, I, I don't know, I just got used to Mr. Pandaria uh, with this shit. Whenever I leap, I just want to have that bonus movement speed. And it's quite useful. Sometimes it's useless, but sometimes it is extremely useful. So I would say go with this one. You can probably switch uh, between other glyphs as well. There are other good glyphs. Let me show you maybe this one. Long charge. It's not bad, honestly. Long charge is can be really useful. Rally, Glyph of Rolling Cry, however, is really bad. I mean, when you, while your Rolling Cry is active, you gain 20% leech, healing you for 20% of your damage and healing you can cause. So it's, it's not that good. I tested it out. Just, I'm just not impressed. Rude Interruption, however, I think maybe if you want to replace Glyph of Heroic Leap, Rude Interruption is really good. Whenever you interrupt a spell with Pummel, you have 6% more damage done. And I am switching between, between those two Glyphs from time to time. My third glyph is Glyph of Shattering Throw. They removed Shattering Throw of spells. Uh, we can't, uh, we don't have it anymore, but they made it a glyph. So if you glyph it, you can have it back again. It basically removes bubbles and blocks, as you all know. I, 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 you should have it all, all the time. Of course, in arena, when you are playing, uh, when you are not playing against Paladin or Mage, you, you shouldn't have that one picked because it's just useless. It doesn't uh, remove armor anymore, so it's just to remove bubbles. But you then replace that with a rude interruption. Rude interruption is very nice, as I said. So yeah, switch between those four glyphs. I think those are the best. Let me see. Actually, is there anything more? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Unending rage. Actually, it's not that bad, honestly. But it's more of a PVE guild glyph. So I'd definitely say switch between those four glyphs. Uh, those are the ones that impressed me the most. And uh, yeah, that's that. That those are the glyphs that I use. So let's get to the last one. Last thing now. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is my DPS rotation. I won't be talking anymore because I, I, my throat hurts. I hate making these guys that are like 20 minutes. I can't fucking talk that much. I need to take some masturbation sessions now to relax. But anyways, few BG clips, arenas, just to show you how I play my DPS rotation. I hope you guys, this guy helped you out. Uh, Jesus of Fury Warriors is out for now and enjoy these clips. Also, let me know in comments below, did you enjoy my guide? If you didn't, if it didn't help you, just tell me what did I, why, I mean, why, why, what did I do wrong? And uh, yeah, I'm out now, enjoy these clips. What the fuck? I have reflect! I have reflect! Dude, I have reflect checkup! Oh my god, bug world of bug!